Hello there, my name is Mr Manners and I've got 15 minutes to tell you the edge you need to succeed at GCSE, but we're especially focusing on maths. Now, the peak performing student believes the following, all right? Natural talent is not important. You aren't born with a maths brain. When you challenge your GCSEs, it's about effort. And I'm going to talk about effort quite a bit in the next 15 minutes or so. It is never too late to change that attitude and growth mindset. I'm sure you've heard that in your school in the last few years, having a positive attitude that we can all learn. But it is about effort. And let me tell you why. OK, when you take on your GCSEs, about 700,000 students around the country are going to do their GCSEs uh, in the next few weeks. Now, to get a four, you only have to be in the top seven pupils of every 10. OK, so what about those bottom three, the ones you have to beat to make sure you get at least a grade four? These are the pupils most likely not to put in the effort. They're the ones when you're in the exam hall, when you look at them, you're going to see them. They're going to have their head down. They're going to have given up. They're the ones that won't bother doing a question and rereading it over and over. They're the ones who are just going to doodle. They're the ones who aren't going to use every minute of the exam. You can put in the effort because that one more mark can beat other people. It's not about getting them all right. It's about getting more marks than others. And to get that four, you've got to be in the top seven in every 10. You've got to beat those bottom three. You have that attitude to beat others, because that's what it is, I'm afraid. Then you can get those grades. And there are sneaky ways you can get them and clever ways you can get them in the maths exam as well. By the way, if you're aiming higher, good on you. To get a seven, you've got to be in the top two pupils of every 10. So again, it's about beating the other eight pupils. Now, this is an attitude and something you've got to remember. Everyone, when they start their exam, goes in with zero marks. Everyone has zero at the beginning. You can only gain them. You can't lose marks. You can't go into negative marks. You can only gain them. So how do you gain marks? That's the point of these 15 minutes or so. Now, for a start, an easy mark to gain. And I remember a teacher telling me that I said this to them once and it stuck with them for ages. If you see a pair of brackets, just expand them. All right, expand them straight away for a correct first stage. It says here the first method mark, show your workings, expand those brackets. Now, interestingly, um, it's not for getting it right. Actually, the mark is given for knowing to multiply out, for knowing to multiply all the terms in the bracket, in this instance, with the two that's on the outside. And you get the mark for knowing that. And uh, examiners are told to mark positively. They're told to look out for what you know, to give you the marks, to try and give you credit. So I use this expression a lot, show what you know. Examiners are told to be positive. Look, it says it very clearly here. This is the what, what the examiners look like, uh, look at when they're beginning to mark. All the marks in the mark scheme are designed to be awarded. Mark schemes should be applied positively. They are supposed to try and give you marks wherever possible. So you have to show what you know to make sure that they can do that for you. Now, there's some exam language to look out for. I'm going to only choose a couple of these quickly, and then I'll show you, want to show you some examples how you can get marks where the majority of the country haven't got marks. It's fascinating to see. Uh, if you see this language, show that. So here's an example of a question. Show that in the corner, it says there, show that Sandy pays more than $2,500 on Monday. Well, what that means is, look, here's the answer. It's more than 2,500. Just show how to get there. And that's all this is. And looking at the marks, as you can see, there are two method marks and that one answer mark there. You might get this in a question as well. Is X correct? So in this instance, if I show another one, is Danny correct? So he's gone shopping, bought a loaf of bread, bought some milk, et cetera, et cetera, as you can see. But in the bottom left, it says, is Danny correct? Now it also says, you must show how you got your answer. So this just means, show that the answer is right or wrong. Danny has said here £3.30 worth of change. Well, show that it's right or wrong, but here's a point that a lot of people don't realise and they don't remember to do. Say whether he is right or wrong. That is so key. Let's look at the mark scheme at the very bottom, the little arrow just there. The answer mark is only given if you state the yes or no with the figures. So you must go back to what the question's asking you. The question's asking you, is Danny correct? Not £3.50 or £9.80, whatever it might be, you've got to say no and that figure. Now, those two examples were worth showing you because if you have a look at them both now, look at the one on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, they only have one mark for the answer. They both gave two marks for what we call methods or processes. And interestingly, you can pass GCSE maths by getting hardly any questions right because it's these marks that stack up. Let me show you some of the figures that help you. 
Okay, in November 2021, just last year, in the foundation papers, paper, um, this is Fred Excel, but it's the same kind of idea for all the, the boards if you are taking a different board. Uh, 1F, 2F, or 3F, the foundation papers, 37 marks out of 80 were given for methods and processes. Nearly half of the marks were given for methods and processes. In the higher paper, I just took, took one paper, 47 marks out of 80, well over half were given for methods and processes. Again, the answers, well, 40, so that was only, what, 33 marks out of 80 for getting the answers right? And if you actually look at that one, that's nearly a grade four. Um, so it kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it? Is that why for the last five years, your teachers have been saying you must show your workings? That is why, because the marks will add up so quickly for you if you show your workings, if you show what you know. And remember, you can only gain marks. You cannot lose them. It's really important to remember. I want to help you with a couple of things that might help in other exams as well. Now, please get yourself a, an empty water bottle. It shouldn't have any writing on it or anything like that. But something like this. The science is there. Drinking water improves memory and focuses attention. Mild hydration, just a slightly, when you're getting a dry mouth at the top of your roof of your mouth, that means a 2% um, dehydration. That means it impairs your cognitive performance, impairs your brain performance. It's important to stay hydrated. Interestingly, for those of you who get stressed in exams, look on the right-hand side here. An increase in thirst was associated with decline in energy. You need all your energy for every minute. You don't want to be the child who puts the head down with no effort. Okay, it says there, um, the thirst increases anxiety and depression. In fact, those are reduced in the exam if you keep drinking water. So get yourself a clear water bottle. Make sure you've got that ready for the exam. A highlighter is so important because what I want you to do when you go into the paper, you open it up and you highlight the order of the questions you want to answer. No one says you have to do question one first. Do the ones that are going to get you the most marks first, the ones that you feel confident with first. And if you do that, then suddenly you've not got to the situation, which I've known loads of students do, get to the last question and go, oh, I didn't have time to do that one, but I could have done it. You plan at the start. And also there are highlight key words in the questions. I'm gonna show you a really good example how to beat the rest of the country in a few moments time. Now here's an interesting one, polo. Now some schools do allow it, you shouldn't take wrappers in, but imagine a polo, if you know what these are like, if you put them in your mouth, it takes about three to four minutes to dissolve. The idea is if you had a polo with you for three to four minutes, that's the three or four minutes you need to start the paper, read through the paper and plan your order of the questions. Don't just go question one and start. If question one makes you nervous, well, go and do question two. It's an easy, maybe it's easier. Polo, three or four minutes at the start. Take your time, read through the paper and plan which questions you're going to do first. Get what you think are the easier marks first. Let's keep going back to maths. Now, this year you've been given a formula sheet. Now, these are just free marks for you because if you can recognize a question and go back to this formula sheet, oh yeah, I think it's on there. Then if you substitute incorrectly, the first mark is there for you. Let's have a look. This question here, this diagram shows a sector of a circle. Now it says work out the area of the segment. Now area of a circle. Now I think if you go back to the, the let's have a look. Area of a circle, there it is. It's on both of them. And if you just put in the area of the circle, you get the first mark. Have a look at this. Now it's a four mark question. That first mark for finding the area of the triangle or the second one for area of a circle. Two marks for just finding the area, because your key word here is area. And as I said about the highlighter earlier on, highlight the word area. And if you find those two areas, you've got the first two marks. And interestingly, the mean score across the country, 0.25. And I said earlier on, you've got to beat other people. The key word here was area. Look at that question. And can I get the first two marks in this instance? Yes, I can. And the, mar and the um, formula sheet is going to help me. Let's carry on. Now I see the word volume, I see the word prism. Is that on the formula sheet? Yes, it is, volume of a prism is on there. And again, let's have a look at it. So find the air, um, to substitute into the equation, it's the first mark, the process mark. Three marks, the mean score across the country was 0.19. Again, it's about beating those people. If you get one mark, you're beating most of the country, looking at that average score just there. Once more, you may recognize this as a right angle triangle. Isn't there a right angle triangle in the formula sheet? There is. It talks about Pythagoras. And that's the four mark question. And for the start of the process to find the length, it doesn't say get it right. It says for the start of the process. So putting in the, uh, the correct values in the correct place, that's the first process mark. You don't have to do the next step to get the next mark. 
Okay, well, you actually have a look to complete the process. Yes, you do. But for the first mark, I've got that wrong. We're allowed to make mistakes. But the first mark is gained by substituting them in. Doesn't mean you have to get the correct 164 just there. You might get the wrong number. But substituting them in correctly gets you the first mark. And again, look at the average score across the country. 0.21. By getting that first mark, get the first mark. You will beat thousands of children. Get the first mark and show what you know. I'm going to show you just another quick couple of examples. This question here was on the foundation and higher paper for one of the boards, and it talked about this Tamara's house decreased by 20%. So if I just go over to my visualizer and have a look, well, the key words here, decreased by 20%, and that was Tamara's house, which was 220,000. Now, if I just found out 10% of this, so 10% of 220,000 is 22,000. So 20% I know is 44,000. Now, interestingly, I know that's the first mark. But also I see the word decrease. Now I said that's why the highlight is really important. I know decreased means going down. So if I show that 220,000 take away 44,000, by doing this, I'm showing I understand decrease. That's the next process mark. Don't believe me? Let's go back to the mark scheme and have a look at it. It's a four mark question. For start to pro the process to find 20% of tomorrow, process one. For a complete process to find at least one new value, that's the second mark. Now, interestingly, get those two marks and you beat loads of children across the country. 1.38 was the average, but the next two, they're even easier ones to get to, to beat other people. Let's have a look. Um, those arrows are there, by the way, just to remind you the kind of um, the quotation marks. If you didn't get 44,000, if you got 43,000, well, if you understood the process and showed the process that you understand what you're doing, you get the marks. You don't always have to get the numbers absolutely right. You really don't. Let's have a look at this question here. Natalie makes potato cakes in a restaurant. Now I see, I see a ratio there. Okay, now let me just go back to my, uh, my visualizer and have a look at this question. So I see she mixes potatoes and onions. Here is, this is really important here. Now I see a ratio. Now I love drawings in mathematics and every opportunity I get a chance to do it, I'm going to do it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine pieces of potato apparently. There are how many pieces of cheese? There are two, one, two. How many pieces of onion? There's one onion. Now in total, how many parts to my ratio? How many equal parts? Well, I've got nine plus two plus one. I believe that equals 12. Let's go back to the mark scheme because interestingly, a four mark question, the first part was for just adding those parts together. The first mark, sorry, but adding those marks together. I'm getting my words scrambled up. I'm looking at the time. I want to make sure I'm inside 15 minutes. But I got the first mark just by doing that. The average score across the country, 0.89. You are beating thousands of children for just getting the first mark, having the attitude to say, I can put in the effort and do this. I can write something down that makes sense. I'm nowhere near the answer. I mean, look at the answer, 12.85. What did I do? I haven't got nowhere near that, but I got the first mark by doing something. I put in the effort and you can put the effort in too. One more question, final one. Now, um, this diagram shows two squares. Work out the area of the square. Now, what is this? How many marks? Four marks again. Let's go back to the, uh, the visualizer. That key word I said earlier on, the highlighter the area. Well, what shapes could I find the area of? Well, if I happen to find out the area of this whole big square, and I believe that whole square is eight by eight, now that means the area would be 64, eight times eight is 64 square centimeters. Or if I found the area of just one of these triangles, so five by three, and I think how the way you do that is five times um, half times three, whichever order you want to do it in, doesn't matter. Let's look at the mark scheme for finding one area, the process mark, for finding one area, whether it be a square, whether it be a triangle. Let's look at the average score across the country, 0.55. You are beating thousands of children by putting in the effort to try and think, what is the first mark? Can I get the first mark? It's about your attitude as you approach this exam. So take this advice, this is the final minute and the final screen. Don't leave any questions blank because you can't lose marks. You can only gain, gain them. If you write zero, I guarantee you get zero. Absolutely guarantee it. But if you write something that makes sense and you know the examiner's got to mark positively, then you can get the first mark. I said about polo at the start of the exam, go through the paper and do the questions you're confident with first. Highlight the ones you want to do first. Start confidently so you feel good. Think polo.
again, get the first mark. What could it be for? That's for you to have a go, put in the effort and then show what you know. It may be worth the marks and do use every minute. Put in the effort. Don't forget to reread. Some people say reread your questions. I say redo them because you reread them. You, you, you see what's there and you just believe it. Redo it and you might find the mistake. So if you've got the time at the end, redo questions if you've got the opportunity to try and get that extra mark because that extra mark could mean one higher grade. If you're the top of uh, grade three, only one mark will get you into grade four, maybe. Practice means progress. However, all this in mind, you've got to go in with this attitude. You've got to be positive. We just ask you to do your best. If the exam is 90 minutes, do your best for 90 minutes. Keep drinking the water. Stay focused at 90 minutes. Put your head down. Think, I gave it my best. We could never ask for any more than that. Best of luck to you. Put in the effort. Be positive. I'm sure you'll do your best.